All right. Well, we'll bow our heads. We'll start with a quick prayer and then the, the pledge. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to come together and to undertake the responsibilities that have been given to us. We pray for wisdom and discernment. Uh, we pray, dear Heavenly Father, uh, for those who are in Florida uh, and have suffered through the consequences and for the safety of the first responders and the linemen and the crews that are out there. Uh, please uh, keep them safe and bring them home safely. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, first thing we have uh, minutes of August the 11th. Any changes to those? Any modifications? Any motion to accept? I motion to accept the minutes of the last meeting. I'll make a second. All right. Oh, all in favor? I'm going to do a roll call, but it's a little uh, <laughs> useless. <laughs> you just look at us this, this morning. Uh, next uh, item is the MED pension plan amendments. Uh, hope you've received those in your packets. Hope you had a chance to go over them. I'll turn it over to Aaron, who's promised to give us an exciting presentation on yes. a plan as amendments. As short as possible. Um, so just in order to offer the lump sum distributions the uh, to the deferred vested participants, we need to amend the plan to allow for the distribution, and then also the amendment provides for the termination of the MED pension plan through the purchase of annuities. And I'm happy to answer any questions. I do want to point out that the um, lump sum distribution calculation has been modified slightly from what was originally used when the surveys went out. We updated the mortality table, so it should uh, show an increase on those um, distribution estimates um, from what they originally received, and uh, but everything else has stayed the same. So it's a, it's a beneficial change to the plan participants as they <clears throat> consider whether or not to take the lump sum. Right. Any questions on that? Looked in order to me. Uh, I'm fine. Okay. If you don't have any sure. questions, I'll make a motion to approve the amendments. Uh, I second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. uh, unanimous. Good. We're flying now. Um, <laughs> Ms. Holland, you want to come up and give us a little overview, uh, and then I have a request after that. Um, sure. I think our, our we were Charlie and I were just talking our our books you handed out are as of the 30th, so they didn't capture yesterday, which I, ha I, ha I, ha I have that information here Good. for you, so you can Small you can jot it down if you'd like to. It, yeah. I think it just goes to illustrate how two days yeah. in a strong market can move the needle when you're talking about the size of a plan that you have here. Yeah. So, and it also lets you know how quickly kind of that number can swing either, as we all know, either direction. Thankfully, the last two days were pretty favorable. Today started a bit off, so I do have that update for you. So you're not promising those last two days will continue? I would like to, <laughs> but I don't think I can do that. Um, I, I think the last time I was here we looked at June 30 and then we captured July, the end of month July. So uh, it took me until late yesterday afternoon, but I do have September 30 information. So that's what we see in this package here. Um, if you turn to page three, this is the summary that we typically see when we come. We're capturing the third quarter here from July through the end of September. We started with a beginning cost basis of $24,811,700. We collected $123,923 in dividends and interest in that quarter. Um, there was some beginning accrued income. We paid distributions uh, or benefits in the amount of $402,798.66. The expense for the plan was $30,423. The real, realized gain or loss, that would be any activity or transactions I made in the portfolio that actually realized that gain or loss, and it was a loss of $241,010.38. We have some accrued income that was due to us of $99,265. We are carrying an unrealized gain, so those are kind of on paper. I haven't made that transaction of $446,071. And at the end of September, the market value is $24,721,264. So 
you look at that number and then we look at what it was as of close yesterday, it was two million, and this is a number you'll just have to jot down, it's not on the page anywhere, um, two million five hundred and forty eight thousand eight hundred and thirteen dollars so up about eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars in market value and you know two strong days which represented about three and a half percent and all that does is show us how volatile the markets are right now and I think that's important in some of the decisions that you have in front of you as far as timing and what's going to happen with the plan but if you move to the next page where it's got a summary of the investment so this is just the holdings high-level holdings as of September 30th we have about six hundred and eighty three thousand dollars in the money market as interest rates have climbed the money market what the money market is paying has climbed so you're earning over two percent in a money market right now I know that's not terribly exciting but certainly a lot better than it was a year ago and we anticipate that will continue to climb as the Fed makes adjustments in interest rates and those rates start to climb um, we recently I think it was on the 30th we had a bond mature for hundred and fifty thousand dollars that we've dropped in that money market and we're just gonna leave it in that money market at this point we have no plans to do anything with it as all these decisions are being made with the plan but we've got just shy of 60 percent in equities about 40 percent in fixed income um, one thing to note when you look at the holdings is between now and the end of January 2023 there are bonds that amount to about eight hundred and eighty five thousand dollars that will mature so if we just hang on to them we don't need to sell them they will come due sometime in the month of January so those you know if you're thinking distribution March February those will come due on their own so you know my my point there would be just to hang on to those and let them mature on their own. I don't really feel like there's any risk to those. So just shy of 900,000 will mature prior to the end of January in 2023. So this is just a list of the holdings. Really a lot has not changed. There were a couple equity um, swaps and a couple positions in September just to kind of be a little bit more defensive in the portfolio, but you'll see as I mentioned, we've had two days of, of nice upward movement, and we've got a market that's trading off a bit today. And interest rates, you know, expected to continue to climb. So this is just a summary of the holdings that you have all seen. You, you'll see that there's more government obligations probably than we've used in the past. Lately, we've been using more treasuries, agency securities. Um, we've got some taxable municipals and then some investment grade corporate debt in the portfolio. And if you look on the in the upper right corner, page four, under that corporate bonds, there are the three that I mentioned that will mature. There's a Bank of America for 135,000 comes due January 11. There's an auto zone in the amount of 300,000 that comes due Jan January 15th. And there's a Capital One in the amount of $450,000 that comes due January 30th. And then you see after that, our next maturity won't be until late April. So that might be a little late for you on what your timeline is. So this is just a list of all your holdings. I think you guys have seen most of them. The um, fixed income goes through page six. And then we start looking at all of the individual stocks in the portfolio. I'm trying to see which were the newer names. I've got a list of the purchases and sales in the portfolio a little bit farther back. So if you have any interest in the activity in the portfolio, you can kind of take a look there and see what's going on. The, the portfolio owns individual bonds, it owns individual stocks, it owns mutual funds, and it owns exchange traded, um, exchange -traded funds. So if in, as far as trading activity goes, if you were to purchase or sell a mutual fund, that trade settles the next day. So you sell it today by a certain deadline, the cash is available tomorrow. The some of the bonds you can get next day settlement to be safe, I would say two day. So your stocks, your exchange traded funds, and your bonds in the portfolio, if we were to sell them, maximum two days, we would have the cash available in the portfolio. So very short kind of turnaround if we make that transaction as far as settlement goes. If you move to it's page 12 in the bottom center of the, of the deck, this is the performance for the entire account. So the month of September saw the stock market sell off probably 10% on its own in one month. Um, your bonds sold off probably a little over two in the month of September. So if you look from August to September, it's really not a very pretty picture there. So we're capturing September 30th performance here. So if you look at that year to date column all the way to the right, the total portfolio is off just over 19%. The 12 year trailing, I'm sorry, the one year trailing through September is off about 16. And then you push to that three year annualized return at 162 and the five year at 259. So I think this can show us what 12 months of a 
poor number, how it can creep into those three year and five year trailing numbers. And it can quickly move the other direction as well. But what we're seeing in the last week or so, um, it's similar to kind of March of the, of the pandemic, March of 2020. So how the market has behaved and, and some of those, there has been no place to hide. Um, pretty much every sector is down. Really the only winner um, is energy or oil. That's really the only sector. Those names are up. All the others are performing down. And, and your bonds, you know, interest rates rise. They suffer as well. The next page takes a look at kind of the bonds or the summary of the bonds in the portfolio. Under that 930 column, we've got about $10,160,000 in face value. So if, they were, if we were to hold them all to maturity, we would mature at $10,160,000. We have a yield to maturity in the portfolio. If you come down that September 30 of 487, we hadn't seen that in a really long time as far as, you know, we, we saw four and we got excited. Um, but you can see a year ago that was 122 and now it's 487. So that just gives you an indication in how rates have changed. Um, still very short. The average duration of the portfolio is less than three and a half years. So that tries to um, mitigate some of the market value volatility by keeping that portfolio short and still really good quality in the portfolio. If you flip over a page, you'll see the fixed income returns, and that's your bonds in the portfolio. You can see the numbers aren't as poor, but you still haven't been able to hide from the market in um, this calendar year. So year to date, your fixed income is off about seven, seven and a quarter in the portfolio. Um, one year trailing is about 775. Three year, it's off just shy of 1%. And then the five year trailing average is just shy, a positive just shy of 1%. And that, that piece along the bottom is just a, a benchmark for a, an investment grade bond portfolio. So on the fixed income side, by managing our duration, um, we've been able to have some pretty significant um, outperformance. It's still a negative number, but outperformance relative to the benchmark. If you flip over a page, you can still see we're pretty heavy on the domestic side, large cap, small cap, mid cap, U.S. stocks, and then about 16% in international, and that's represented through mutual funds. So this is the slide that tells you what the stock market's been doing um, this, this year and what the funds or the equities in this particular portfolio have been doing year to date through September off about 26.5%. As I mentioned, September alone was nine, off 9.5%, almost 10% just for the month of September. The one year trailing is off about 21, <coughs> excuse me, the three year is 4 excuse me, um, and the five year is just shy of five. So below that, I've given you kind of the S&P 500, and then M that MSCI um, is an international benchmark. The, port the plan owns both, so it's a combination of the both. But I just wanted to kind of give you a reference that domestic, international, both places, all asset classes have been down. The next two pages. It's just the purchase and sales that have been made in the portfolio since the beginning of the year. So some of these transactions you've seen, but I've picked up, you know, the last month or two that you did not see at the last, I've got one, thank you, that you did not see at the last meeting. So this is going back to January 1st and takes you through September 30th. And I think that, that, that pretty much covers, you know, where the plan is. Um, Performance-wise, from a, you know, while all of these discussions are going on, we've talked about, you know, as things mature, obviously leaving them in that money market position that's earning just over that 2%. Um, we have the abil ability to, you know, trade out pretty quickly. There is an earlier deadline on mutual funds when you're trying to transact business. You know, the market closes at 3, but on mutual funds, you've got an earlier deadline during the day. And if you're trying to trade bonds, you have to put those out for what we call a bid indication. And you know that takes a little more time, so you can't push up right into the end of the day. But all of the assets are, are very liquid, easy to move away from. I think the, biz, the big decision is um, timing and you know what that looks like for the committee and um, the council. So, and I know you must have lots of questions. <laughs> I'm happy to answer any of them. Any questions? No? Not for me. Good, Tammy. Um, well, let's see if we do as we take the next next part of our 
I've got a conversation here. Um, so here's, as we, as we look at after the lump sum distributions go out, we decide what we're going to do to put the plan in a permanent position, which is moving it into annuities. There's two factors that are involved, and that's the value of our assets and corporate bond rates. And so with the volatility of the market, where we're at and where we're invested now, um, and it doesn't, you know, right now it appears to be pretty volatile and probably during our time frame will remain volatile because there's nothing that would indicate otherwise. Um, one thought is to move ourselves, you know, the vernacular is to go to cash, put ourselves into fixed, uh, get out of the market so that we take away the volatility. Uh, it looks like rates will either stay up or maybe even go up more if inflation doesn't uh, mitigate somehow, um, which is on the positive side because as corporate bond rates go up, that helps us out on our pricing when we when we do go, go into the, the annuity market. But um, so the question is, with our portfolio now, um, should we not move more to fixed assets, um, whether it's cash or, or money market or holding the bonds, as you said, they're going to mature. Obviously, we wouldn't want to disrupt that because that's right. within our time frame. Um, and, and doing it in an orderly fashion, you know, we're not advocating dumping everything off, but in, leaving it to Tammy to find an orderly fashion to get out of that, which will essentially hold our assets very close to where they are now and allow us to go through and do the calculations we need to do to determine what the, the pricing is going to be as we move to annuities. So the question to the to this committee is, uh, um, do we want to do that? Um, I would advocate that we pretty strongly that we do do that now, given where we're at in the market. And one of the places that you can go if you made that decision to do that versus the money market, really to make certain that the only place you're moving is upwards. And I've done this, uh, if you know you've, with certainty that you've got a liquidity event, if you went to cash, you could utilize like a U.S. Treasury bill. And you yeah. can match that maturity to whatever your, mm -hmm. whatever, if it's, if it's March 31st. I mean, the six month T bill right now is just shy of four. Yeah. So you buy it at a discount, it matures at face value. You're really not, you know, you look at your statement and along the way you see that market value change, but you know on that maturity date with certainty that you're going to have those dollars available for your um, distributions or for, you know, terminating that plan. So those treasury bill rates on the short end, three months, six months, you're probably picking up at least one and a half to what your money market is paying you. Right. So if you decided to do that, that would be an option for you. Exactly, yeah. I think it's best that we try to minimize our risk. And, and so I, I think trying to move out of the market and into some fixed income would be most advantageous given the time frame that we're looking at. Good. I agree, and I think Treasuries is a good place to park it. At, park it in the meantime. Yeah, we we'll just watch our maturities with that lump sum, so we have enough available mm -hmm. in the lump sum, so we're not mm -hmm. we can get in and out of that. Right. How are we? Feeling? I mean, I. I you're, I think you guys need a, a finite or a fixed number so you can right. kind of make those calculations. And with this needle moving, you're not able to do that. The only way you're going to get that is to sell the assets except for the ones that will mature prior to. And we would just target date, I think, is it March 31st? or But March you're giving yourself a February end yeah. to, to try and make certain you don't have any surprises? Yeah, I think well, we need to take the date. Yeah, the lump sum um, elections are due by February 15th. Okay. So maybe a January, an end of January Treasury that you know would mature then if it's going to pick up. But it's just up. deferred vested. So we'll have a number that yeah. we know <clears throat> will remain that we could go into a longer term. And we wouldn't and expect that to be some. an immediate distribution anyway. So right. if it took you oh, know, that's true. an additional four to six weeks mm -hmm. of processing, getting you know getting all the information mm -hmm. to y'all and everything yeah, that's to true. get this distribution. So the uh, annuity purchase is slated for end of March. Okay. So. Um, I think giving her a date certain. Right. Yeah. I mean, just like you said, it's more for the computation, and you'll know what the end result's going to be before you have to actually make the distribution. Right. Yep. And, we, and we'll provide you know, a uh, specific date of when we need the cash. Mm -hmm. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll, we'll be working with CALDA and BCG to... Uh, 
Yeah. And we're done with that timeline exactly. It's mm -hmm. going to look like once the amendment gets approved. You know, that's the big thing is just mm -hmm. making sure the amendment gets approved so that we can proceed with our current plan. Right. And, you know, assuming that happens. And I, I would expect we would have a pretty uh, definitive timeline in the next couple of weeks while while we're, you know, selling everything off and, and getting an idea of where, you know, we'll obviously have to keep some cash to, to do our normal activities of mm -hmm. distribution mm -hmm. and right. expenses, but... Do you want to start transferring the money into cash to then go into treasuries before it's come to council for approval or wait? Which... which because that's a two week, that's a two vote process, right? No, it'll be one. Is it a resolution? It's not an ordinance. Okay. I don't even think it's a resolution. Um, so does this I can't remember. have to wait for approval from the council? No. Or can you so. make the decision yeah. today? Did you have the authority? We yes. can make the decision on the investments. The the plan amendment itself, okay. and they're tied together, obviously, but the plan amendment needs to go to council, but the investment decision can be made by this committee. All right, so really all we need from you, Craig, if you were the person, is an email that says, you know, we met today, and please liquidate all uh, mutual funds and equities in the portfolio. Well, you know, and bonds also. I mean... But why don't, why don't we do this? Why don't you send me an email that says what you need what to we need. have said? Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll say that and send it back to you. <laughs> I think that's a possibility. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We want to hit your compliance goals there. <laughs> that's important. <laughs> all those all those things. All the auditors. On the, on the bonds, um, I would probably... You can see movement in the, in the face value or the you know the market value of the bonds as well i mean if we looked at the statement we can see you know unrealized losses because we might have purchased them when you know we had cash and we had a two percent and now four percent are out there in the market when we go to sell it it's not as attractive to people so i think you can see movement in the fixed income i would consider just hanging on to the ones that might mature Oh, yeah. In the timeline and all the others, if yeah. you need to have a number with certainty, you're not going to get that even hanging on to the, the longer fixed income. Again, yeah. Right. This month or November, mm -hmm. right. that number's only going to get ugly. Yeah. 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 yeah, I agree. So definitely the ones that would mature between now and then, and the others I might consider just yeah. think about. Yeah. So, so you want to eliminate to that stop. movement. Sell the bonds that are about to mature before our date. Yeah, yeah. I, would I would consider that. Something less volatile, like the treasury. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, Charlie, your previous statement was almost a motion. Do you want to turn that into a motion? And <laughs> yes, sir. I, pack, uh, I make a motion that we're going ahead and uh, stabilize. Yes, stabilize. Stabilize our, our investment portfolio. I'll make a second. Liquidate. Stabilize. Yeah, liquidate and to stabilize. Yeah. I'll make the second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous there, Melissa. <coughs> uh, all right. Any other business? Well, I did want to mention also, I think I mentioned it to Aaron in a, the email yesterday. For anyone... Go to that microphone there. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just always a little bit easier. I'm sorry. Except a um, in any case, I mentioned it to Aaron in an email yesterday. For those who are eligible for lump sums to come out, We'd like to, Pinnacle would like to come down and help facilitate that to get them to roll it into either, you know, help them roll into a current IRA that they already have or we'd certainly be happy to set them up an IRA in the office. And if they don't want to do, quote, you know, stocks, bonds, whatever for a investment objective, we can certainly bring someone also from just the bank side that would do CD IRAs, bank IRAs, that has, you know, virtually no volatility in those. It'll depend on what their risk tolerance is and what they want to do. But anyone that takes that lump sum and goes in their name, it's, it's a taxable issue for them, and they need to know that. Yeah. I can't tell them what their total tax consequence is because we don't know what all they would have on their 1040. But they, I think whatever communication you send to those beneficiaries that are eligible for that, you need to encourage them 
highly encourage them to go see their tax preparer yeah. to see what they would really want to do. Yeah, that's that's our plan and to provide them with the resources they need to make their decisions. That's all part of our good our okay. current plan. Yeah. yeah, like I said, we can bring packets to are, are you having meetings yeah. where those lump sum folks would come or how would that work? So I spoke with um, Amy Krause at Caledon and let her know that um, we were interested in allowing Pinnacle to attend those meetings, you know, to uh, with the participants. So when um, when the amendment gets approved, I believe Employee Services will be sending out a letter to the uh, participants, letting them know kind of what's coming up next, and um, there'll be options when they receive their communications from Calden for you know if they. I'm sure Calden will offer in person Zoom or telephone meetings however the participant prefers and you know, since they'll be traveling I'm sure they'll try to get their in-person meetings done over you know a block of a day or two where they can just set them up back to back um, but I did speak to Amy and let her know that um, we would like to have Pinnacle involved you know you know present or available as well for the participants who don't already have a 401k or IRA that would be interested in setting one up um, and so that you'll know, I did get the manager of the trust area, Keith Davis, to approve a 20% discount, which would be for anyone that wanted to set up an IRA with trust at Pinnacle. That's like treating them like an employee because that's the discount I would get if I had an IRA there. That's great. Thank you. So I'm trying to make it as easy a transfer for them in a because I know this is all very hard for everyone. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. Anything else? All right. We'll stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.